we go. What are they doing here? I figured there were some of these orange flowers growing out of the pavement up ahead. Everyone was slowing down. Good morning. Good morning. And that's how he is every morning. Just a happy, happy baby. He's a real morning person. He didn't get that from me. Got that from the other side, I think. <laughs> or maybe from my parents. They both like mornings. Say hello to everybody. Say good morning. Say good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so it's tight, but we made it work. It's not too bad. I'm getting ready to leave on a trip now again. Showing you uh, in front of this truck that's why I like to be in front of the big trucks <laughs> I'm just like you I don't want to be behind the big truck I just know better than to make a dangerous move to get in front of them so off we go it was a busy busy weekend uh, every weekend is it seems now that's okay Theo had his doctor's appointment, his four month doctor's appointment. He is doing amazing. The doctor was complimenting him. He's ahead of the pack, leading the pack. He's advanced for his age. He's doing things that four months old babies are not usually capable of doing. Practically able to roll over already and roll back very close. He can roll onto his side and roll back very close to being able to roll over he can sit himself up straight in his chair and hold his neck and his core steady he's doing great he's a healthy boy in every way very happy to hear that he had a glowing report from the doctor while we were there I had a doctor's appointment too and uh, we went and got our Costco membership that was a big day for us big day very excited we are now Costco members we are part of the club thank you very much thank you they did not have trumpets playing when we entered the first time with our memberships but I'll forgive them that's okay there's a lot of people in there there'd be a lot of trumpets playing all the time if everybody got the trumpets come on in bud come on in get in front of me get in front of me my lanes ending over there. I'm not okay I left room for you my friend the left lanes ending up ahead there that's why I didn't move over maybe I should have moved over I feel kind of bad now should I have moved over? The guy behind me didn't move over either. Okay, I don't feel bad. That lane's ending. I didn't want to get in that lane. And you know how it works. You get in the left lane to let them in, and then they, they lock you in that lane. They come drive right beside you. They don't let you back over. That's exactly how it works. driving in Northern Ontario, 
all of you who have been here know what I'm gonna say. It's amazing that all of these vehicles, when there's just two lanes and no passing lane, can only muster up enough horsepower to go about 70 kilometers an hour. But as soon as there's a passing lane, suddenly, they bring out all these extra horses that they've been hiding somewhere and they can do 130 until the passing lane is over and then they go back down to 70 and they can't get any faster than that. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? I, I just like to point that out. <laughs> How to get my daily dose of complaining in there for you. There you go. Now you know what irritates truckers the most. You know what? I shouldn't say what irritates truckers the most because truckers are the most guilty of that. Yeah, that's right. Truckers like me. I'm going to throw a couple of you under the bus here. Throw you right under the truck, metaphorically. Why is it that truck drivers who should know how annoying that is, they're the worst ones to do that? When you get to a passing lane, you're going behind a truck that's doing 70 kilometers an hour, suddenly, oh, suddenly they can do 120. Riddle me that. If you can come up with a proper explanation for that, I'll get you a cookie. So I don't think there's there's a, there's a proper explanation. People are just weird that way. I don't know why. They don't want people to pass them, even though they know that you'll be going faster than them and you'll be out of their hair as soon as you're past them, right? No, no, no. It hurts their pride. No one can pass me. Oh, uh, well, see, for me, when people want to get past me, I slow down and I make it easier for them. As long as they want to go faster than me. If they get in front of me after I slow down and they slow me down, well, then you have the wrath of Josh coming up behind you, okay? I'll hold a grudge. And if I ever get in front of you and I'm not in a hurry, just saying. Come to your own conclusions. I don't have to go fast. <laughs> I don't know, just messing around. So we're in Ontario here, obviously. And uh, we're getting close to Kenora. This is cottage country here already. Uh, a couple of jet skis in front of me here. A couple of RVs that we've seen all over the place. A lot of tourists, a lot of travelers, a lot of cottage goers. It's a great time of year to be here. I wish I was here uh, in my own vehicle, wearing my swimming trunks on the way to the lake. That would be great. Any one of these lakes, there's many lakes around here. Tons of, look at a map once. Go on Google Maps after this video. Go and zoom in on Northern Ontario, just over the border from Manitoba. Look how many lakes there are. It's insane, crazy. Manitoba too, we got lots out there. Did you know Manitoba's slogan used to be very similar to Minnesota's slogan? Minnesota's slogan is land of 10,000 lakes. We used to always chuckle at that because Manitoba's slogan was land of 100,000 lakes. But now it got changed to just friendly Manitoba, which if you've been to Manitoba, you'll know that's not exactly true. But we put it on our license plate, so it must be true, friendly Manitoba.
still blasting away over here north of Kenora. your best friend today. It's a hot one. Oh, this Canadian is melting again. I'm next in line. I should be able to get in there soon. Then we can use that crane up above there that rolls back and forth to get the tarps on there. It's just two tarps. Quickly throw them on, same as this guy here and then we'll be out of here. I'm okay with a little bit of a break now though. It's, whew, I need to rehydrate. Two hours almost exactly down to the minute from the time I got to the gate to the time I rolled out of the gate. Now that's a pretty good time. That's almost a record, I think. I, I don't think you can get much faster than that there. We are now on the way down to Brainerd. The good thing is that we should be able to get there at a pretty decent time tonight. Uh, a little after midnight, maybe, around midnight. And we will unload tomorrow morning. And then I have a reload taking me back home. And then after that, we have a trip going up north in Manitoba again. That's going to be a special trip because we're going to have the RGN trailer, which is the removable gooseneck. Got to pick up a big piece of machinery up there and bring it back. That should be fun. Something different again. All right, this is our favorite intersection. You got traffic coming downhill around the corner from here, from our left, and we want to go right. Hope for the best. Nobody's coming as far as I can see. Put the hazards on, the please don't hit me lights.
really hot, but luckily enough, we were able to get loaded fast. So I didn't have to stand out in the heat very much. And I got to tarp my load inside. So I wasn't doing that out in the heat. Thumbs up from Trucker Josh. Minnesota. I've got myself parked nearby my delivery point that I'll be delivering to in the morning. It's pretty warm out so I'm gonna put the screens in my window and see how I sleep. I like to sleep with it very cold. It's these hot summer nights in the truck that uh, sometimes get to me. I can't complain because they're better than the cold nights, but sometimes I have a hard time sleeping when it's too warm. This Canadian can't handle the heat that well. <laughs> Any of you from actual hot places would laugh at me because it's probably not hot here at all for you. It's about 22 Celsius here right now. Uh, it's about one in the morning, obviously. Parking lot's empty. It's gonna be a good night. We'll be okay. I don't want to idle it and run the air conditioning. I'll be okay. I'll figure it out. I got a fan in there and uh, Like I said, I got those screens that I put on the window so I can get a nice breeze through there. I'll be fine But we made it from home to Kenora got loaded up with our freight. We got it tarped back there And we made it all the way down here to our destination Now I did stop for two hours earlier today during my day which means I could probably use the split hour rule in the US tomorrow and just stop here in the sleeper berth for eight hours and then get moving I'm not as familiar with the split hour rules in the States just yet but we'll see what we come up with in the morning see what the e-log says if we have to stop here for the full 10, well, that's okay, too. We'll stop here for the full 10. We'll go get unloaded, and then I head back to Thief River Falls. Back behind me. Switch trailers for a loaded one, and take that home. And like I was telling you earlier, Saturday we have a little bit of an interesting uh, pickup in 
Gillum, Manitoba. Far north. That's the furthest north I've ever been in Manitoba. Way up in Gillum, and I gotta take the RGN trailer to pick up a piece of equipment, which is a low bed trailer, and the it's like a gooseneck. It's called a removable gooseneck trailer, RGN. I've shown it in my videos before. So the, the it has a generator right on it, and the neck part of it actually comes right off. Like here, I'll show you as if it were this trailer here. One sec. So the trailer goes really low down to the ground there, then back up over the axles in the back. And this whole part up here would detach from the trailer, and then you drive the equipment onto the trailer that way, right? And then reattach the trailer, and that's how you load stuff. You can just drive stuff on that way. So that should be something different, something interesting. It's quite a, quite a drive up to Gillum. Uh, from Thompson all the way there, I think it's like 200 and some kilometers of gravel, rough gravel road. I'm not looking forward to that. I'm already feeling bad for Old Blue, but like I said, if the money's down a gravel road, we go down a gravel road. I'm not running a charity here, though I do really enjoy my job. I can't afford to do it for free. So, if the money is down a gravel road and there's enough money at the end of that gravel road, well, Old Blue's going down a gravel road then. That's the way it goes. Where whoever's got the most shiny dollars for me, you know? I'm a Canadian, so we have loonies, which is our dollar coin. Whoever's got the most loonies for me. I even take a couple of toonies if they're down a gravel road. Just gotta be careful and take it slow. Hopefully we don't get too many dings from the rocks. That's why I want to have, uh, eventually, like when I refurbish this truck in uh, probably a couple years, we're going to stretch stretch the wheelbase, refurbish it all. I'm going to put uh, individual fenders over each set of tires to keep all the rocks down. Because right now, this front half fender will keep all the rocks from shooting up against my cab over there. But these back ones, they still get a couple through there sometimes. Because from here, right, they could shoot right through there and hit the bottom of my truck. And uh, it is what it is. Slowly make things better. While at the same time chasing those loonies. Thanks for watching today, everybody. I'm going to go to bed now. We'll talk to you right here in the morning. Mm -hmm.